Hello, my name is Tracy Tripuk. I'd like to welcome you to our show, Your Health Matters. With school back in session, we will be discussing back to school safety. And we have some special guests to help us understand some of the important tips during this exciting time for parents, children, teachers, and motorists. I will introduce you to our guests in a moment. But first, back to school time can be both exciting and challenging for everyone involved. According to the New York State Department of Health, in 2006, motor vehicle traffic injuries versus pedestrian included a yearly average of 312 deaths, 3,446 hospitalizations, and hospitalizing 18.3 pedestrians per 100,000 um, population in 2006. The rates were the second highest in those aged 10 to 14. There was a yearly average of 12,104 emergency department visits to those traffic-related pedestrian injuries, treating 62.3 of every 100,000 in 2005. The rates were highest for males and New Yorkers aged 15 to 19, following, uh, followed by New Yorkers aged 10 to 14. In 2006, this rate increased from 62.3 emergency department visits per 100,000 in 2005 to 63.2 emergency department visits per 100,000 New Yorkers in 2006. According to the CDC, nearly one in every five children between the ages of five and nine who were killed in traffic crashes was a pedestrian. AAA warns drivers to be extra vigilant about pedestrians before and after school hours. It is the afternoon hours that are particularly dangerous. Over the last decade, nearly one in four child pedestrian fatalities occurred between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. We would like to try to alleviate some back-to-school safety concerns you may have by providing you with some information. I'd like to introduce our guests today with a special thank you to Suffolk County Vincent DeMarco. We have with us Deputy Sheriff Thomas Indents from the Community Relations Unit and Emergency Management. And from, tip, from AAA New York State, with a thanks to John Corlett, today we have with us uh, Robert Sinclair Jr., Manager of Media Relations. I'd like to thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome, gentlemen. I provided some background material. Um, Deputy Sheriff, do you have anything to add um, to some of what I just said? Uh, I've been a Deputy Sheriff for the last 12 years out here. Before that, I was a uh, New York City police officer for five years. Uh, so I've seen both spectrums of law enforcement, suburban and city. Uh, also, I've been a volunteer fireman for the last 24 years mm -hmm. with Ron Cockmore Fire Department. So, uh, seen a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So, it is. Um, I, what I found, I guess, concerning was that it seemed to be um, young males, uh, especially you know teenagers and um, and uh, young boys, that uh, seemed to be at the at the greatest risk. Um, for being injured. Yeah, a lot of times what they say is that uh, the teenagers don't really fully mature with their brains till a certain age. So that's why sometimes they're not as mature and they act a little bit more recklessly mm -hmm. than other people. Uh, a lot of times uh, females uh, are a lot more cautious, whereas the guys are a little bit more reckless and they kind of don't think of consequences of what can happen, you know, in every day. Uh, unfortunately, in this world that we're living in, mm -hmm. with video games and these movies that are out there, it kind of desensitizes to the public and to the younger generation, you know, the violence and graphic and consequences. Because mm -hmm. in the video game world, you just reset, you start yes. over again, yeah. right? No mm -hmm. harm, no foul. Yeah. But and recently I saw some stats related to young male drivers that they are more likely than any other group to be involved in sleep-deprived driving. Mm -hmm. And it had to do with their uh, active lifestyles, mm -hmm. let's say. Um, oh, yes. A lot of them are involved in shift work. You know, they're working overnights. 
Um, and you know, like uh, was mentioned, uh, they tend to be risk takers, and uh, that comes back to bite them and us as a result because we're on the roads along with yes, them. Yes, everyone pays the price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and all the sorries in the world just cannot change after something tragic happens. Yeah. So, and we try to enforce that when we talk to the, the younger uh, teen drivers that are just starting out. Uh, you might be sorry and want to say sorry a million times, but it's not going to change anything. It's not going to bring that person back. Yeah. You know, the consequences, your life and the lives of others get changed in a split second, you know, because you made a poor choice, a poor decision. Yeah. So. Look at the case of the young man who was just recently sentenced in the crash on the Southern State mm -hmm. Parkway last year. He was driving four of his friends killed. Oh, yes. oh. And, uh, you know, he got charged. I think he's going to be going to jail for 15 years. But his parents got charged as well because apparently they bought him a high-performance car. Right. And the only license he had was a learner's permit. Mm -hmm. So, and combine that with drugged and drunk driving. And it was mm -hmm. a formula for a major disaster. And look at all the lives now that have yes. been negatively affected. Mm -hmm. They have to keep these things in mind before they go out on the roads. Right. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to talk to you, um, and maybe we can touch upon this later on, but about uh, education. I know or prior to the show beginning, we were talking about, you know, how lectures are, mm -hmm. are um, not, they don't really, uh, aren't as effective as some of the other um, uh, techniques that, uh, that are uh, available. Um, to us, you know, f for uh, getting through to, you know, parents and to children. So um, maybe this would be um, a good time, if I may, to uh, show that, that uh, clip, uh, that video that you provided for yes. us about uh, school buses. Excellent. And uh, we could do that now, please. Okay, so um, that video was about um, uh, you know school buses, and uh, there were several things about that video that were very alarming. Can can oh, we both? Yeah, yeah. Can we both? You know, d uh, all of us discuss. I would actually prefer the two of you to discuss. <laughs> you know, what was what was done correctly and what was done incorrectly in well, that video. Well, if you notice on that video. That bus is actually set up with a video camera. Mm -hmm. uh, it also indicates when he has his stoplights on. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can clearly see there's no, well, was it closed? Did they really have the lights on? You could see if you watch the video. Uh, the car is coming. Just no consideration because I think what happens is a lot of times, if you agree with me, uh, when school starts, people that have been going to work mm -hmm. before you know, they can get to work a lot quicker. But once school starts, mm -hmm. yes, things are gonna slow down. You're gonna have to remind yourself, I need to set a, a little bit of extra time because if I get stopped behind a bus, you know, that's gonna eat in some of my uh, commuting time. Mm -hmm. And in that video, clearly those people, they could care less. They just wanted to get to work. And you can see at the end there, the kid trusting that cars are actually gonna stop almost gets clipped by that car. So that's another thing that we have to reinforce with the children mm -hmm. is that you cannot expect these cars that they're going to listen and obey the law. Because sometimes, just like it's been shown, they don't. And tragedy is just a split second away. Without a doubt, when school begins, traffic volumes increase significantly. So a lot more cars, vehicles, school buses on the roads, uh, children being taken to school. So you have to anticipate that it's going to take longer to get to where you go. And the point has to be made that when a school bus is stopped, mm -hmm. traffic going in both directions has to stop. When yes. that, that sign is out, when the red lights are flashing, it has to be stopped. And I remember when I first started this job about 14 years ago, one of our traffic safety personnel made the point, said that if, a, if you were southbound on the New York State Thruway and a school bus is stopped on the shoulder of the northbound side and the red lights are flashing, you must stop. 
all traffic must come to a stop when there's a school bus with red lights flashing. And you know, that's, that's very profound. Maybe a lot of people may not realize that, but they should. Yes. It's important because you never know. The children, like in the video, might dart out. You may not see a child, but you need to be looking for Absolutely. a child crossing. And these children and are very excited. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they're going back to school. They're seeing all their friends again. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes they're not thinking, you know, like a mature adult would think. They're, you know, they trust adults to do the right thing. And that's the whole point of Schools Open Drive Carefully, the campaign that we have when school starts, that parents, drivers have to be aware of the fact that a lot more children are going to be on the roads and have to drive extra cautiously. And, you know, we, we recommend that they drive extra cautiously, certainly around schools, around parks and that sort of thing. But it has to happen everywhere because children are going to and from yeah. school. And as was mentioned, the most dangerous time is in the afternoon when everyone gets out of school en masse and the children flood out in the street and had the experience yesterday in driving through Valley Stream uh, past a couple high schools there and the, the children were just everywhere and it was low and slow. So drivers need to keep that in mind and we try to impress upon drivers and children and their parents um, about how to exercise proper safety during these, uh, these, especially these first couple of days and weeks when school begins. Is this also reinforced in the schools? Uh, they try to educate uh, the general public, mm -hmm. and I know AAA and, and we do. Uh, we'll put signs out, school is open, we'll put display, video display signs, uh, posters, mm -hmm. the bumper stickers. The bumper stickers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just to remind them that school is open. So if you don't have a child that goes to school anymore, right. you know, sometimes they forget, mm -hmm. you know, September is school. Right. So just to remind them. Yeah, we've distributed more than 5,000 posters and 15,000 of these bumper stickers. And the posters are displayed in police stations, firehouses, libraries. Uh, they're displayed on the toll plazas, uh, the toll booths at... Uh, Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority uh, facilities. The electronic message board signs mm -hmm. over the roadways have been showing the schools open, drive carefully, um, logo and message. And uh, it's something that we've been doing at AAA in New York since 1945. And it started back in 1933 at the Automobile Club of Missouri uh, when uh, Mr. P.F. Drury thought it was a good idea to alert everyone to the mm -hmm. fact that schools open. And so it's been going now for a long time. And, uh, you know, a message that we hope that gets out. And certainly we're doing as much as we can to get the message out to drivers um, through law enforcement and commercial vehicles and what have you. And also in the schools, we have training programs where our traffic safety personnel go into schools and give various levels of training um, up to including um, behind the wheel training for high school students. Um, Robert, can you provide some practical planning designs for communities on how to prevent pedestrian inju injuries? Well, it's very important that the word get out on how pedestrians should behave, especially um, youngsters. It's important to note that you should be using sidewalks. If sidewalks don't exist, then you should be on the left side of the road walking against traffic. Um, crossing at the corners. Do not cross in between. Um, paying very, very strict attention, even when you have the light and you're crossing, you know, your head is on a swivel, you're looking around very carefully. You have to be especially uh, careful during bad weather, and certainly we know the bad weather is on the way, and that you have to pay strict, strict attention to uh, crossing guards and uh, law enforcement personnel yes. when they're giving I direction. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it is particularly uh, difficult during. Um, in climate weather, especially when snow is on the sidewalks, and right. I, I mean, I, I have seen children walking, you know, in the street because the snow hasn't been removed from the sidewalks, and um, that that presents a dangerous situation. Definitely. And so. you know, we've got a, a major event. Uh, Halloween this year is going to be on a Friday. Oh dear. Yeah, so that's going to prevent, uh, present, I should say, extra complications. So we want parents to be prepared uh, in anticipation of that. Uh, that Halloween is, is only surpassed by Christmas in terms of uh, the number of uh, sales and gifts mm -hmm. and, co and mm -hmm. costumes and all of that. So it's a big thing. A lot of people get involved in it. It can be very dangerous. So we hope people will keep that in mind. Um, what types of driving tips can you give to motorists to protect pedestrians, uh, specifically children? Well, they have to start putting down those cell phones, number one. Okay, the distractions that you have in the car, there are so many. Uh, cell phones, people, 
putting on makeup, yeah. right? So yes. So like, shouldn't be, you know, driving and uh, yeah. you know, putting on lipstick. Yeah, because think about it. Lipstick. You know, I I've seen people do that where they're driving with their knees, okay? Mm -hmm. They have both hands, one hand in the mirror, one hand maybe doing the makeup. Uh, I've seen other people reading a book. Well, how can you try and read a book while operating a motor vehicle? The iPod. Vehicle? The iPod. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's just, well, it's just so much out Putting there. On your mascara. <laughs> exactly. See, when we were growing up, when we were younger, we didn't have that many distractions right. that they have now. Right. Uh, so they just need to allocate themselves enough time to get to where they're going. Mm -hmm and think about the, the problems that they might run into. Well, what if I get stuck behind a bus? So I'm gonna need an extra five, 10 minutes. Uh, be conscious that there's gonna be kids out there, you know, with back to school. Be conscious that the roadways are gonna get a little more congested because now you have all the teachers back at work, you have all the other people that were off all summer, you know, so those roads are gonna get congested. Mm -hmm. But basically it comes down to about common sense and obeying the laws. Well, so, my grandfather right. used to say, "Common sense is not common, son. So be careful." But, <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, the the distractions these days not only come from external things, you know, <laughs> cell phones and talking to people and looking at things outside the vehicle. Uh, but we did a study last year that looked at the distractions that exist in the vehicle, and manufacturers these oh, days yeah. are putting oh, so yes. many different technologies on vehicles, some to hopefully mitigate uh, distractions, but some that create distractions. Oh. And the ability to tie your cell phone to your vehicle, uh, so-called uh, um, infotainment technology, um, it, we found to be the most distracting, that when your cell phone gets a text message and the vehicle can convert it to speech and read it to you, and then you respond to it, we found that to be the most distraction, the highest distracting distractor mm -hmm. that exists. And these things are built in the cars. Manufacturers more and more are building cars that are in essence rolling smartphones because they're finding that young people aren't as interested in driving as they once were. Um, that they can communicate with their friends, with Skype and, and technology. Mm -hmm. yes. um, vehicles are expensive, insurance is expensive, gasoline mm -hmm. is expensive. And so to make the cars more palatable, more appealing, they're putting all these technologies on the vehicles. And the manufacturers will tell you, well, that you know we, we mitigate the distractions by having voice commands, but that process of having to remember the command and and say it and have the vehicle respond is also a distraction you know I, I always talked about the uh, the commercial with a certain football player and he's driving he, you know he's tell, he's talking to the radio to tune a certain station he talks to the navigation system to uh, reroute him because there's traffic mm -hmm. he, he makes a call on the phone all those things are distractions, and yet they're played up now as being something that's appealing. Mm -hmm. And people have to realize that, especially now, with all the kids back on the roads, that we have to ignore those things and, as we like to say, shut up and drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're getting close to the end of our program. Uh, and, and so I guess what I, I think we need to reinforce, as you've both stated, um, educational programs for children, parents, and, and motorists have to be, um, you know, a, a different variety. You know, it can't just be a lecture. We need to use multiple different uh, tools uh, that, that at our disposal. Um, and if you could, um, I don't know, each take 30 seconds to wrap up and then um, uh, Deputy Sheriff and Dents, if you could possibly um, also, just quickly add uh, about stranger danger because that is yes, very important. Because that is huge because now these kids, now they're leaving you. They're going to school. You're not going to see them that often. Uh, they're going to be gone for eight, nine hours of the day. It's very important that you reinforce to the children about the stranger danger. What to do if a stranger approaches them. You know, give them instructions. Also, maybe... Uh, uh, you know, uh, a key word or a secret word that if God forbid anything ever happens to you and you have to send a stranger to go get your kids, that they know that secret word, the password, mm -hmm. so that the kid knows, okay, it's safe to go with this person. Uh, just reinforce those things with your children, you know, and, you know, if you see anything suspicious uh, around the neighborhood, certain cars near the bus stops, you know, take notice of that. Mm -hmm. Don't just blow it off and think, ah, maybe the person's just lost. Take notice of it. Maybe write down the license plate number 
and let law mm -hmm. enforcement know so we can follow up on these things. And you said that, that uh, the department, the, the sheriff's department, will go out and uh, educate on... Yeah, we have a lot of different programs that we do. 99.9% .9 of the programs in the sheriff's office are totally 100% free. Uh, the sheriff will send us out. We do drinking and driving programs. We do Operation Safe Child, which is hooked into the Amber Alert. We're the only ones in the county that have that. Mm -hmm. um, there are numerous programs. And you'll see on, I know you're going to post it later, our website, SuffolkSheriff.com, mm -hmm. the list of programs. The only program that there is any cost to is a Lifesaver program. Mm -hmm. But you can find out more information on that. Okay, thank you. Robert? As the economy has gotten tougher, we've seen a lot of school districts eliminate or cut back driver's education. And so with the schools not able to provide that kind of information, it's incumbent upon parents and caregivers to teach children about vehicle safety, uh, pedestrian safety. And we've got lots of tools at AAA that can help with that. And to find them, you can go to AAA.com slash safety. And again, many of them are free. And we also have programs where our instructors will go out to schools. And we hope people will take advantage of those. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I would like to thank our guests, Deputy Sheriff Thomas and Dents from the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office and Robert Sinclair, uh, Manager of Media Relations from AAA New York. Um, we've learned a great deal today and I really thank you both. Um, and thank you for watching. Um, thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next week when our show will be about mental health awareness and suicide prevention. And please have a safe back to school.